Hello, this is Richard Silverstein of Tikkun Olam coming to you again for Social TV. The Syrian revolution has brought yet another casualty. Long, warm relations between Iran and Hamas have frozen over the latter's renunciation of Bashar al-Assad. It began when Khalid Mashal was faced with a momentous decision about whether to remain true to his longtime ally or throw in his lot with the largely Sunni opposition and tens of thousands of Palestinian refugees resident in Syria. Hamas's leader had grown increasingly uncomfortable with the violent response to the peaceful protest movement. He felt Hamas could not side with a tyrant. Though he eventually renounced Assad, he did so quietly. Subsequently, most of Hamas's personnel left their long-term refuge in Damascus, eventually finding a new home in Qatar. But in past weeks, both Iran and Hezbollah have gone all in with Assad. If this were poker, we'd say they'd bet the house. Hezbollah has committed thousands of its fighters to bolster Assad's rule. They're currently fighting an all-out battle for the strategic border town of Qusair with the rebels announcing that 1,000 new reinforcements have arrived to bolster defense of the town. It appears to be a fight to the end. The latest reports say that Hezbollah is massing up to 4,000 additional troops outside Aleppo to begin a battle to retake the country's second largest city from the rebels. Iran is normally known for its cold calculation when important issues are at stake. I'd have thought it would be more far more advisable for them to pressure Assad into negotiation and compromise, or barring that, finding a proxy among the opposition. That would ensure it might retain some level of access in a future Syria and guarantee arms transshipments for its Hezbollah ally. Instead, they seem to be playing a losing hand. In the poker game that is the Middle East, desperate nations make for dangerous enemies, not because they will necessarily defeat you, but because you can't account for how they'll act. The smallest mistake could blow this tinderbox sky high. Now, Iran has made another momentous decision. It is forcing Hamas to pay the price for abandoning Assad. The $250 million yearly subsidy it provided the Gaza Islamist movement has dried up. Arms shipments have stopped. The Syrian crisis has caused a massive realignment. Former allies are now enemies. Those who formerly found little interest in common have been thrown together for better or worse. This too has caused a new instability in the region. When your world is turned upside down and you aren't sure where to turn, that's when you are at your most vulnerable and there is great danger. Hamas leaders say they have other allies who will take up the slack. Qatar has stepped forward with a promise of $400 million in aid and a plan to create a $1 billion development fund composed of contributions from other Arab states. Hamas, an ever-resourceful movement, even in its darkest moments, will find substitutes for Iran. Turkey's Prime Minister Erdogan is scheduled to visit Gaza for the first time in two weeks. Though in the past two days he has developed political headaches of his own that might change his plans. But Turkey could become an important strategic ally of Hamas, just as that nation's relations with Israel further worsen. It could more than take up the slack from the loss of Iran and Syria. There is one party that, though it faces uncertainties, is delighted with Syria's bloodbath, Israel. When its enemies are disheartened, it sits pretty. A weak, divided Syria, though posing a danger from a potential political vacuum, means there is no powerful champion for Syrian territorial claims in the Golan. No champion for Hezbollah, no arms corridor for Iran. A pretty good deal for Israel. Unless, of course, the victor in Syria is an Islamist extremist group like the al-Nusra Front. That would be Israel's worst nightmare. It would mean a Shiite threat in Lebanon in the form of Hezbollah and a Sunni threat in Syria in the form of Al-Qaeda. Add to that Hamas in Gaza and you have almost a perfect storm of Arab resistance, an unpredictable Arab resistance at that. At least with dictators like Mubarak and Assad, you had an enemy you knew. Someone in Margaret Thatcher's inimitable phrase describing Gorbachev, quote, with whom we can do business, unquote. But after the dictators fall, what follows? Le deluge?
This has been Richard Silverstein for Israel Social TV. Thanks for watching.